Welcome back to the Band Guide, where we use Garage Band to create professional sounding music. I'm your band guy, Colin, and today I want to talk to you about the only two moves you can actually make with an EQ. I want to break this down super simply, kind of like EQ for beginners, but even if you've been mixing for a while, stick around because I think this approach to EQ or thinking about EQ in this way is still really going to help you out. But before we even get into it, I want to give you something. I put together a completely free EQ cheat sheet that walks through basically everything you need to know about EQ in one quick PDF guide. You can download it and reference it anytime you want. There's a link in the description below. It's really going to help you out. It's already helped out literally thousands of people. So I'm really excited to share it with you. Be sure to grab it again, completely free. But let's go and talk about the only two EQ moves you can make. But before we do, let's just do a brief overview of what exactly EQ is. So EQ is fundamentally just a tool that allows us to add or reduce volume of specific frequencies across the frequency spectrum. Sounds complicated. All that really means is we have low sub frequencies like your bass on your car stereo, mid frequencies like the mids on your car stereo, and then bright frequencies like the treble on your car stereo. So that's all we're doing. And we are either adding to or reducing the volume of those frequencies in a way that can help clean up our sources in the context of our mix. If you don't know, EQ is the most powerful mixing tool that you have to clean up your mix, make it sound full, make it sound clear so that it sounds professional. So you need to learn EQ. Every pro mix engineer is using EQ all over their mixes, but that doesn't mean it actually has to be complicated. So let's make it really simple by starting with what I just said, which is that all we're actually doing with an EQ is adding or reducing, which is sometimes called boosting or cutting. So think about it in those terms simply. That is all you're doing with an EQ. And there's only really two and a half ways that you can do this. The first way is with this way that we're looking at right now. This is what's called a bell. So here we're boosting with a bell. We can also cut with a bell. So that's our first move. The second is with a shelf. A shelf is basically just saying from here and up, we're just going to boost or cut. So you can boost or cut with either of those. And then the half comes in that there's one more way that you can cut, and that's with a filter. And what a filter is, is it's just going to cut out everything from here and down or up here from here and up. So in this case, this is what's called a high cut filter or a low pass filter. This is just cutting out all the high frequencies and letting the lows pass through. This one down here is what's called a low cut filter or a high pass filter because it's letting the high frequencies pass through and cutting the low frequencies. And those are just cuts, so you can't boost here. So that makes it very simple. This is a really easy one to use to understand. This is just a cut. So EQ is fundamentally just boosting or cutting, and that's great, but now what do we do with that? How do we figure out what to boost or cut? Well, first of all, trust your ears. You know what you like, you know what you don't like. So if something doesn't sound good to you, then use the EQ to cut it a little bit. If something does sound good to you, use the EQ to boost it a little bit. So let's break that down a little bit more in the context of an actual mix here. So for example, I'm on a bass track here and I've already set up an EQ here. And this EQ is giving us a nice little boost down here in the low end. If we listen to this in solo, it's adding a nice amount of low end down here. And then I'm doing a bit of a cut up here because this was a little bit harsh sounding to me, just a little bit too uh, drivey, if you will. So if I extend this a little bit, you can hear if you're listening on good speakers or good headphones, you can hear there's a lot more low end coming in from this. If I turn this all the way off, it feels kind of thin. If I turn it on, it feels really full and has some nice sub information. If you're not listening on good headphones or good speakers, it might be hard to hear. But this is off, this is on. So I'm cutting up here to try to reduce kind of the harshness of some of those hits. This is what it sounds like. And I just cut a little bit of that. And then I'm boosting down here to give it some low end. And how do I find what frequencies to do that on? Well, I'm just like you. I just play around until I find what's working for me. I know going into it that I want to add some low into this and I want to reduce some of these brighter frequencies that might be a little bit harsh. So I play around finding in this area where is it a little bit harsh with a really extreme boost? And then I cut a little bit of that. That helps me clean that up, right? And then similarly down here, I just played around until I had the right area where it was sounding good, the right low end and not adding too much right above it. If I start to get up here, it starts to sound kind of muddy, right? So keeping it down here just gave me good low end without adding any sort of mud to the mix. So. That's the way I find it, but let's look at another example on a guitar, this lead guitar here. If we go to this section that we're in right now, 
Let's take off the loop here. This lead guitar has an EQ that's doing a couple of boosts and it's also cutting these high frequencies out. Now, this is, let's start with these boosts here. This is a really common way to approach boosts. This is just me finding where is this going to cut through a little bit better in the context of the mix. So I listened to this in the context of the just mix out, and I found where out. this guitar really shines through in this mix and then I just reduce it until it sounds good. So this frequency right around here is feeling good to me in the context of the mix. I boost it a little bit and then I bring it down until it's feeling right, you know, with everything else. And then similarly down here, I just wanted to add a little bit of fullness. So if you saw my last video on a big EQ secret, you can add a little bit of fullness by boosting around kind of the fundamental tones of that source. So I didn't just take that on face value. I, I played around until I found where it sounded right. But again, I did this in the context of the mix. Around here, there's body to it up here. It starts to be kind of telephony, kind of harsh. Down here, there's like a nice body to it. So I did a little boost down here. So I, I get kind of extreme, find where it's working, and then I reduce it a little bit until it's working. It's not too exaggerated. I sometimes check in solo just to make sure I didn't overdo it, but ultimately it doesn't matter what it sounds like in solo as long as it works in the context of the mix. All right, and lastly, let's talk about these filters. When and how do you set filters? Well, in short, you should cut out anything that doesn't need low end with a high pass filter. So this filter down here, and you wanna bring it up until it's not getting in the way of the signal that you're working on. So you shouldn't be cutting out things that you need. So for example, if we solo this guitar here, if I were to bring it all the way up here, it starts to sound really thin, right? But when I have it down here, I'm not necessarily impacting the tone of this guitar, but I'm giving it a little bit more space in this low end. If we go back to that bass guitar, for now, these frequencies that I boosted on that bass, these frequencies that the bass needs can cut through in the mix more because all my other sources that are brighter and don't have a lot of low end information, I can cut that out and make space for the bass. So that's the first one. That's really obvious, that's really clear. You'll see that on all of my guitars. If I go through my guitars here, all of these guitars have low cuts here. And then if I go to like my snare drum, for example, there's no low sub information in a snare drum. So I'm cutting that out as well. Same with my uh, rack tom, for example, I'm cutting that out as well. So you wanna find where uh, you can cut that to make space for the bass. And then when it comes to bright frequencies, this is a lot less common for me, but I am doing it on guitars, electric guitars in particular, because sometimes they're just kind of harsh, fizzly sounds that don't necessarily add to the guitar tone. So if I boost this up here on this electric guitar, if you're not listening on a good pair of headphones, you might not be able to hear that, but it's just really fizzly. And so by cutting that out, I'm not missing it in the context of the mix. I can still hear the guitar super well, but I'm now making space for my other sources, like let's say my snare drum that needs some of those bright frequencies. So the snare drum here has some nice crack to it up in those brighter frequencies. So by cutting those on the electric guitar, I'm making a little bit more space for that. I'm also making more space for it with things like my lead vocal. If we go down to where the vocal is here. On my lead vocal, I'm doing a little bit of a boost here, but mostly what I'm doing by cutting on other sources, the high frequencies that don't need it, I'm making space for things like my vocal. So my vocal, these high frequencies here sound good on it. Out of the thick of it. Right? And now you say you so I found proud. where it sounded yeah, good and I did a little bit of a boost. Proud. Bring it back down till it's working. It's not too much, right? That's how you avoid over mixing by reducing it down till it's not too much. And that's simply it. And you'll see here, I'm doing a high cut filter to also cut out, again, make space for my low end sources that need it. So fundamentally, all you need to be thinking about if we go back to our main EQ is that with an EQ, you can boost or cut, and you can do that either with a bell, a shelf, or a filter is a cut. A bell and a shelf can do boosts or cuts, so you can go either way with those, and then a filter is just going to cut it out. And you wanna find things that work and sound good on your sources in the context of the mix, 
find those and give them a gentle boost. And you want to cut things that don't sound as good so that you're making space for the other sources that do need it and you're cleaning up the individual sources. So don't be afraid of EQ. Use EQ. It is your friend for creating a big, full, clear sounding mix. And if you don't already have it, be sure to grab my free EQ cheat sheet from the link in the description below. It's really going to help you out. It's helped out thousands of people, as I said before. So be sure to grab it. It's completely free. And before you go, I want to hear from you. Do you think about EQ in this way, this simple two move way? That's all you can do with EQ. Or is this new to you? Let me know in the comments below. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video. One thing